from the top of Mount Hotham in Australia, welcome to the GCN Show. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, is it the end of bad taste in cycling? Does anything now go? We need your help to try and find out. We've also got big news from Lachlan Morton, some proper science which might change how you train and yet more terrifying cows. More terrifying cows. Sorry, sorry. Si. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that it's currently not illegal to ride a bike in New Jersey while drunk. However, according to NBC New York, it soon could be. Speaking of not doing things while drunk, we also learned that it's probably not a good idea to commission a custom bike while drunk either. Yeah, so this is GCN Plus commentator and pundit Adam Blythe's new frame set, which we're not entirely sure whether he was sober when he chose it. 24 karat gold plated with a giant aero carbon wart grafted onto the front to route his cable whoa. seamlessly through. Whoa, whoa, I wouldn't say wart. Would you not? I'd say more like a manatee. A what? You know, large, fully aquatic, mostly herbivorous marine mammal, sometimes known as a sea cow. I think I'd rather have a wart, quite frankly. Anyway, we'll give Adam the right to reply in a moment. But from one nuts bike to another that is truly nuts. So he did this. Side. Thanks. YouTube channel, The Q, welded together 147 nuts to be precise and created this. Worth watching the video, that is for sure. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And do you know what? I'd be happy riding a bike made of nuts, just as long as there are no Torx bolts or zip ties, both of which, as you well know, go into my room 101. Now, finally, we also learned that Paris-Roubaix winner Sonny Colbrelli, who has tragically had to prematurely retire from racing due to a heart condition, has just got this rather natty tattoo. Wow. Telling the story of his life, we've got his cobble standing in the Arnberg Forest holding hands with his daughter. Good job. He's got big arms for a cyclist, though. That's quite the story panning out on his biceps there. That's right. There is not much room for narrative on my arms, that for sure. Well, you have got your, your ankles, Si. You can fit them on there. What are you trying to say, mate? They're a bit large. Just go careful, all right? Because you know what happened to the last guy that insulted my cankles. I mean ankles, don't you? <clears throat> right, back then to this issue of Adam Blythe's bike. It has got us thinking, hasn't it, about the issue of taste. A contentious and very subjective um, subject. Yep. It might seem to the uninitiated a bit strange for a bunch of people who wear spandex and aero helmets to start talking about taste, but cycling has always existed in a parallel universe. Yeah, you see people who in normal life might look like they've been dragged through a hedge backwards, suddenly start obsessing about whether their cycling shoes now match their sunglasses and their handlebar tape. But we're thinking that currently cycling is in a fantastic period where anything goes. There's no such thing as bad taste. Apart from the specialised head condom. Apart from the specialised head condom. That yes. was then, um, yeah, taking things a bit far, wasn't it? It was taking things a little bit far, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, look, for example, Team EF Education's Tour de France Palace Crocs. Cool. Yeah. They are cool. The new white tyres on Fabian Cancellara's BMC Tudor team bikes. Ollie filmed at Roulair Show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Last year, Connor, I'd have said, disgusting. Now, why not? A bit like your glasses, Si, why not? What do you mean, what do you mean my glasses? Those, those have always been cool. And the latest ones? Also cool. When it comes to kits, for years, we took the piss out of Team Major 2R for their brown shorts, only to find out that now taste has been thrown out of the window. They're now cool too. Yeah, brown shorts. Are we sure brown shorts are cool? I don't know. Larry was wearing them last week when I was filming was, with them. Was for Larry cool? He was cool, just you know, brown shorts. Okay. Um, look at this though. German brand, by love, completed a purple outfit. Tights and long sleeves. And you know what? I like it. Yes, I think this brave new purple world is great, Connor. I like it too. Cycling. Let's face it, it got a bit stuffy. Now, it's open to anyone. You can go wild and express yourself however you want. You can wear black still. You can wear fluoro still. You can wear a purple onesie. You can wear baggies. You can go aero. You can wear pro team kit. Basically, you just got to ride your bike and enjoy it, haven't you? Let us know, though, what you think. Is there such a thing as bad taste in cycling anymore? Apart from the specialised head condom. Yeah. Okay, so is it worse or is it better? Get involved in the comments and we will revisit this topic if you tell us that you think we've got it wrong. In the meantime, though, here's a message from Adam Blythe for you, Si. I, I liked your bike, by the way, mate. No, you I didn't. I liked it. I did. It was nice. What? Even the wart on the Humanity. front? Humanity. 
like I, animals. Like what's wrong with cables? Why, why create a wart to put them through? So my new bike is 24 karat gold leaf by Fat Creations. Alistair, the guy there that does the painting, and his partner, Rebecca, they did their bathtub in copper leaf and asked if we could do it on a bike and they said yeah of course so we did it went for it took a long time to do it i think it took them 100 hours or 130 hours or something crazy um no inspiration really apart from just it's gold leaf and it looks mint and as for oh the front end on it by the way is done by rob hales that is to hide the cables looks a little different um but yeah hopefully it'll look all neat and tidy when it's all built up and as for size comments, um, saying I was drunk when I designed it, we don't get the pleasure of, you know, just being given bikes, being able to just get on any bike we want, you know, money's no object sort of thing, really. So for some of us, we have to think of our paint jobs. We care about what it looks like, the bike. We care how we look on it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, mate. Cheers. Bye. Sorry, Si. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with news of a 45-year-old mother of two who has broken the record for cycling 4,000 kilometres across India from east to west. Rita Maske completed her ride in 13 days, 19 hours and 12 minutes to reach Kibutu, near the border with China in the Aranchal Pradesh, at midnight on November the 14th. Over 300 kilometres a day. What a ride. She took it on sport and create awareness for organ donation for the organisation rebirthtrust.org. Yeah, now on the topic of endurance rides, Lachlan Morton appears to have a new challenge on the horizon. It looks like his sights are now set on the around the world record, currently held by our good friend and colleague Mark Beaumont. As you may know, the current record is a bonkers 78 days, 14 hours and 40 minutes. The effort of which you can see on GCN Plus right now in a couple of cracking documentaries that detail Beaumont's attempt. It should be said that Morton hasn't announced it. It's his team boss, Jonathan Volters. So it'll be interesting to see if Ryder and Boss actually agree on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. Either way, he needs to wait until he can ride across Russia, the fastest route around the planet. Do you think he can do it? Well, I'm not sure, okay? He can definitely ride a bike even faster than Mark can. But I think the round the world record is about more than riding a bike fast, isn't it? Not braking is the first obstacle to overcome, and Mark is exceedingly good at not braking. And then there's precision planning, both of which we still need to see from Morton, don't we? Interesting stuff. Next up, Annemiek van Vluten has raised 17,000 euros for the Amy Peters Foundation and Bikes for Maasai. The current Women's World Champion says she had the biggest turnout ever as she auctioned kit off at her local bike shop. Half the money raised will go to the foundation of Van Vluten's previous teammate, Amy Peters, after her life-changing head injury in a training accident back in January. The rest of the funds will go to Bikes for Maasai, a charity that helps the Maasai population get on bikes, especially children. Yeah, fair play, Annemiek. That's properly cool, that, isn't it? Uh, now, next up, some actual science. If you have ever trained on an indoor trainer, you will know how much harder it is to get the watts out compared to outside. But research by Maastricht University, well, not by them, but by people at Maastricht University, that was published in the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance. One of our favourites, that one. Indeed it is, yeah. Um, they showed that the mean maximal power of elite and world tour cyclists was significantly higher in test riders when taken outside rather than inside over 1, 3, 5 and 14 minutes. The average difference was between 4.2 and 8.8%. The moral of the story, don't set the same power targets indoors as outdoors. Next up, and sorry, you may want to close your ears to this one actually, I think this may just be your worst nightmare. I found a story about a dangerously out of control cow that rampaged through the town of Whitland in Wales after it escaped from the local market. It was so dangerous it had to be humanely dispatched after it caused damage, made it onto the local train line and accidentally seriously injured an elderly man in the process. What's that got to do with cycling? Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Bit, bits of the cow are now available to buy in the local butchers if you fancy it. Honestly though, oh, that story cow. doesn't surprise me in the slightest, poor so cow. stay safe out there people. This is a photo from my brother, my own brother who had to escape from a rampaging cow by running through a bramble patch. By the way, those scratches, they're from brambles, not the cow, presumably. Shouldn't he be more afraid of those? What, brambles? N nasty. Well yeah, but he wouldn't have had to run through a bramble patch if he wasn't being charged at by a mental cow. 
So, you know. I still sympathise with the cow. Now, changing some better news, we've got the names of the people that have got themselves a brand new Giro Eclipse spherical helmet. Congratulations to you. Give me a drum roll um, side, please. Keen Crowley, Karen Insley, Rick Skurla, Wayne Lutz, and Jakob Zemetskik. Wowzers, you nailed that, mate. Nailed that, um, I think I did. Right, there you go. Fantastic. Congratulations, you lot. Um, it, hopefully, you love your new helmets as much as I love mine, actually. Yep. I felt well aero on the way in this morning. I haven't actually, I've, I'm, I'm funny when I wear new kit stuff. What, what do you mean you're funny? I just like, I, I find it really hard to find a time to wear the new kit for the first time. It's like breaking the, breaking the barriers. What? I've gone wildly off topic here, but you what? know when you get a what new bike? Yeah. Or a new helmet or a new jersey. You don't just go like, oh, I've got a new bike, I'm going to get no, a new bike. No, because like, it's still pristine. And then just that first ride on it is like breaking the mould. Well, okay, now I, I sympathise slightly. Like, I haven't ridden cyclocross in my new Giro Eclipse spherical helmet yet because I don't want to get it really muddy. Once it's, once it's, you know, out there, it's out there. It's not going to be that brand new spanking little museum piece. No, okay. I'm a bit weird. Anyway, you lot hopefully will enjoy your helmets and actually wear them. Have you worn yours yet? I'm going to soon. <laughs> 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 oh god, right, talking of new stuff, um, we hear that there's a whole load of cool new stuff that's just been included in the GCN Black Friday sale, yep. haven't we? Some cracking deals too, up to 50% off, so head over to GCN's shop and pick up an absolute bargain. Fantastic. Uh, now, whilst we're on cool stuff uh, that you can get from GCN, have you seen our new Christmas socks? Yeah, green's my favourite. I'm a I'm a green um, green sock man. Really? Are you? Well, yeah. I'm a big fan of alternate colours on socks as well. I think. There you um, go. Yeah. Which is your favourite? I think I'd go for maroon. Actually. Is that maroon? I think it's red. Well, it's like a it's like a Christmassy red, isn't it? Maroon. Are you... There you That's go. red. Definitely red. I like is the that maroon, snowflakes. Nick? Yes. Yes, it's maroon. Maroon. Yeah. I but... thought maroon was brown. No. No, it's really not. <laughs> no, it's really not. Anyway, you learn something new every day. Uh, uh, answers in the comment section underneath. What colour is this sock? Is that the left one or the right one? That's definitely red. I don't know. Anyway, okay, so that's from the GCN Sock Club, um, which you can... Uh, that it... one's green. Wow, that is heavier than I was expecting. I thought it was like, jeepers, have they modelled out of your cankles? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Seriously, okay. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Right, move on. Let's move on. Right then, it's now time for Hack Forward Slash Bodge, where you all update, update, send in your photos of any hack or bodges to your bicycling equipment, and we decide if it is a hack or a bodge. When you say send in, you mean like? To the GCN app. Yeah. Send it in by pigeon. I was going to say, yeah. Some might say upload, but um, but no, send it in. T.O. Box. <laughs> I like the feeling of sending it in. On the back of a postcard. Right, no, come on. Without further ado, let's bring it on. This one is uh, has been submitted by uh, one of Hank's new best friends that he went bikepacking with uh, at the weekend, which you have to watch that video if you haven't seen it. It's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, Andrew, one of the stars of Hank's video, uh, fixed his mudguards with a plant pot or plastic pots, I oh, know, plant pots, sorry, and Gorilla Glue. So there we go. Um, the front has held well, but the back needs a bit of extra tape when it starts to rattle, as it couldn't take the strain of bike packing. Um, I think I see where it's been, been fixed, yeah. I mean, I'm all for, like, fixing stuff, but I kind of feel like with mud guards, there's a sort of important structural integrity to them. You don't want to start messing around with floppy mud guards, because, if one of them gets stuck in your wheel... What I want to know I mean? is what's happened to the plants that are in that plant pot. Well, hopefully they're in the ground, where they belong. Well, might not be. G gardening's very wasteful, mate. You go to the garden centre, they give you like a gazillion plastic pots, you put them in the ground, and then what do you do with your plant pots? You fix your mud guards. That's true. That's anyway. true. On that basis, I'm giving it a hack. Aye, right, there I'm going to give go. it a bodge. We uh, got there. 31% of you lot said bodge. Six, no, wait a minute, 31% hack, yeah, sorry. Much. 69% of you lot said bodge. Uh, there we go. Right, what's up next, Connor? Good grief. So, next up, we have got, well, I'm struggling to kind of, at uh, first vision, I'm struggling to actually see what's going on here. A literal folding bike with hinges. That's pretty crazy. So that this is was- absolutely bonkers. This was sent in by Juan Pique, um, an engineering masterpiece, which Juan um, has seen on his way to the park in the center of Rotterdam. You see everything in Holland. 
in terms of bikes. A full-size frame foldable bike. It even has an electric front wheel. <laughs> what? That is absolutely bananas, isn't it? It um, looks pretty solid. That's I mean, just a massive bodge, as far as I'm concerned. Do you reckon um, it at corners better if it folds slightly? It depends which way around like you go. Like a bendy bus. Yeah. Well, maybe if it's your size, it would, it would help, wouldn't it? Flying around those corners. You would. Um, weirdly, the same number of people rated that uh, a bodge as last time. 69% of people said that was a bodge. Yeah, I think it's a definite bodge for me. Oh, a massive bodge. Yeah. Like the bell on the front. Have you seen that? Looks like an air raid siren. That's, that's enormous. It's an enormous bell. <laughs> I kind right. of want one. <laughs> it's like a yo-yo. Knowing you, you would stick it on a Pinarello as well, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Jesus, right, okay. Next up, we got this one. Um, our stroller oh. had faux leather handlebar, which got ruined in use over the years. I had one spare handlebar tape lying around, transferring skills to my normal life. Even surprised my wife with the results. That is good bar taping. Yep. Fair play to you. Bang um, and hack. I've done the same to my, uh, myself. I've done the same as well to push share in the past. <laughs> yeah, uh, there we go. Um, I think that's a hack. Yep, it's a hack from us. Yep. Straight in there. 93% agreed, so there you go. There we go, yeah. A stroller hat. Yeah, the 7% haven't tried to uh, push a buggy without any tape on it. Yeah. It's a tough, tough beast. Okay, this one's weird, right? Um, sent in by C Cy Gratton. I can't even, can't even recognise my own name in there. Cy Gratton. I was struggling to get my gravel tyres set up tubeless with a standard track pump because the bead wouldn't seal. Oh, that is a pain. I put a strap around the tyre with just enough tension to get a seal and success. No compressor or charge pump required. This could be an absolute game changer. That's a good idea. So, if that works, you've just invented something phenomenal. Like That is a really good idea. It is. Yeah, I, genuinely good idea. Like, I don't like admitting defeat when it comes to tubeless tyres. I like to think that I've got a few little tricks and tips up my sleeve. But honestly, if that works, fair play to you, mate. 89% if you like, so that was a hack. I'm going to give it the hackiest hack of all time. I think that's genius. I'm, I'm going to give it the hack. I know we're being overwhelmingly positive here. My one, my one kind of thing holding me back is what happens if it pops off. It could get even more frustrating just to keep it on the tyre. I mean, maybe it just grips to the tyre. Yeah, and well, actually, my second thing is I don't have a strap like that, so I'd have to go out and buy one. Uh, and if I was going to go out and buy one of those, I could buy like one of those air canister things. That's true, they're pretty cheap really though. Well. I've got them cheap for my surfboard, yeah, in the car. What's up next? Let's move on. So this has been sent in by Eugene Angel 2. Um, a repair bike stand. I use an old bar chair, car in, broken bike, front hub, and put rubber cast wheels on so I can roll it around too. Wow. That is cool. That is amazing, actually. So, I love it. What ha what's he used for the, the metal thing in the middle? The, like the, Which bit? The actual like frame. Which bit? Old bar chair, car rim. So the car rim's at the bottom, the black thing. Yeah. And then he's got a stool. In the stool. And then he's got a little bit of wood. But what's, then, what's the big metal? What's this? Oh, they're like... Um, they're just metal rods. I don't, I don't know what they're called, but they're, yeah, they're like things that yeah, you buy. Yeah, they're just metal... Yeah. They're like, how, do they, you, how do you like internet search that? Metal... Because I want to make one of these. Um, someone far more intelligent than us Iron with bar? an engineering background. No, is it... Uh, this is what I struggle with when it comes to DIY. Can we, just, can we just pause for a Cut. minute whilst we Google some stuff without trying to sound like we're idiots? <laughs> uh, we couldn't find it, could we? We scoured the internet. So that's the thing, so you search Iron Bar and you go down a rabbit warren and then suddenly you're buying... Um, well, we don't want to tell you what we've just no. seen, uh, frankly. Uh, but anyway, there we go. I think that's a tremendous hack. I think it's a hack as well, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Overwhelming hack. Overwhelming hack. Got um, it. Um, 80, 88% of you lot thought that was a hack as well. Well deserved. All right, and this final one. Who needs a $700 climb simulator when you have a paint can? Positives, you keep your front wheel on. You finally have a use for that old paint can. Negatives, you're climbing your whole Zwift session. You can't pull on the bars too, ho too hard. Just don't turn. Uh, is it a hack or a bodge? Bodge. Well... Bodge from me. Like, just ride it on the flat. I mean, it's a great idea if you want to do climbs, but why? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, and that is a that is a massive incline, isn't it? I often stick a book. I do quite like it. I like the whole like variable. I like the variable hill climb on the on the old indoor trainer. But what I'm concerned with this is if you turn, because this is the sort of thing I'd do. I'd forget to to not turn. 
and then I'd turn and suddenly I'd be flying down onto the ground. No, you'd be right. 21% of you lot said that was a hack, so uh, I'm in the minority. But uh, but there we go. Connor? Yeah, I think it's a bodge. You're a bodge. Okay, there we go. In the majority. Right. Thank you very much, as always, for sending in your hacks and bodges. Uh, we do love it. So please keep doing it. Send them into the GCN app as Connor said. Um, and of course, you can vote on all of the other amazing hacks and bodges that are in there that we don't get a chance to shout out each week. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite bottle. After last week's strange inclusion of the GCN Psychology book, what was that doing in Caption Competition? Well, we've got the best caption gets to win the book. I mean, right. it's a cracking guide to, your, it's kind of like your Bible cycling psychology, your mental toolkit. You know who needs this book? Probably me. Lachlan Morton. Lachlan, yeah, Lachlan Morton. Lachlan, I need, I need if you're watching, if you, if you really are going to tackle Beaumont's uh, record, you're going to need to read that, Sunshine. That is true, yeah. He's got a, a few months of hard work ahead. He has, yeah. Um, 78 days, how many months is that? Two and a half. Months. It's not as bad as all that, is it? Anyway, uh, basically, yeah, so who's won this week's? So, winner this week is Shellywell. Right, congratulations, <laughs> Shelley. Well, that's coming your way. What was their caption? <laughs> I thought that was how you say the name. It might be. Shelley. Well, <laughs> this just rolls up the tongue. <laughs> you just, you tongue. just amuse yourself there, mate. <laughs> okay, right, we'll no, but <laughs> Shelley. Well, <laughs> it's all right, there's no rush. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why. I just love the name. Uh, true gravel riders know there's only real gravel if you're foraging your own food at the same time. Looks like she's searching for mushrooms. Searching for mushrooms. Yep, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I like that actually. Yeah, that is quite funny. Um, well done. What was their name again? Shellywell. Oh yeah, I get it. Shellywell. There you go. Right. <laughs> Mark's new book winging its way too. Yeah. Uh, back to the old GCN Elite water bottle coming your way. This oh. is the photo for this week. Two very cool looking derny riders yeah. uh, at the Ghent Six Day. You gonna get started, Connor? Oh, let me think, let me think, let me think. I'm, I'm just woeful, I'm woeful. David's I, ankle's I, gonna be fixed by the time you come up with the caption. That, yeah, I was, I was just, I'm always getting I'm worried I'm gonna insult someone. Okay. Uh, you go for this, you go for it. All right. Now taste has gone out the window. Anything goes in cycling. Yeah, so, there we go. Oh, yeah, I see what you did there. So I mean, I've insulted two people, but um, yeah. Hopefully they're not watching. If they are, apologies. Um, I actually think you look really cool for Derny riders because they often look like plonkers, don't they? But anyway, they're the dudes though. They're the dudes of cycling. They are the dudes. Yeah. yeah there we go. Uh, anyway, you will undoubtedly be able to beat that. Um, particularly poor effort. So get involved in the comments section down below. Put your witty captions there, and we'll pick up. I, this happened to me a few weeks ago. Someone's been drinking from the GCN Elite water bottle. Uh, we want to know who it is. That's disgusting. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't just put oh, it, it's put rank. it, put it's it back on the shelf side. We'll get you a fresh one. Don't worry, team. Don't worry. Okay, right. Moving on to comment of the week. This was under Hank's uh, bike packing video from uh, Bettina Pina. Got some cracking names today. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? Have you have you drunk some of that bottle or something? <laughs> okay, right, I'll just carry on on my own then. Uh, you are really smashing it with the content lately. lately. Hank's expression <laughs> when he saw where they were staying for the night and what breakfast meant. Love to hear the bits of history of the places you visit as well. All in yet another fantastic video with fun adventuring. It was a cracker of a vid, wasn't it? An it was a cracker, cracker, it was a cracker. And we also got this comment sent in by a really intriguing name. I know I'm getting a bit, bit of a laughter off the names today, but Life with Ollie. Oh, crikey. Ooh. Sounds a bit grim, doesn't it? Whoa. Um, but yeah, taking Hank along on a weekend journey. Oh, what fun. GCN needs to set up rent a Hank for a weekend program. Now, there's a thought. If you would like to borrow Hank for a weekend, I don't think we need to rent him out. We just need to lend him. Yeah, I mean, we, we'll, we'll pay you to take him. Yeah, like yeah. babysitting, yeah. basically. Yeah, um, or like more like dog walking, isn't dog it? Dog walking, Hank yeah. Hank is the GCN Spaniel. We'll give um, you a leash you can attach him. He in. needs a lot of exercise, uh, lots of care and attention, the odd cuddle. 
um, and plenty of food. Yeah. And then he's and then he's fine, isn't he? For he the is weekend, fine. He, does, he loves a cuddle. Yeah, he can't get by the day without a cuddle. No, he can't. He loves a cuddle. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you'd like to borrow Hank, get involved in the comments. Uh, let us know where you will take him. Yeah, we'll send him to you. We'll send him to you. Don't worry. Yeah, and um, and yeah, the best the best comment get to Hank for the weekend. And um, well. We look forward to seeing where he ends up. We will up. follow this up. You think we're joking? Yeah, no, what? Smash smashing idea. Um, and then last one. Um, yeah. I got this from uh, Bruno Toccio. Thank you from my heart. Sorry. Well, that's all right. Uh, I believe you're telepathic. Uh, yes. Um, you were able to reply to a host of questions churning around in my brain for a while now. Listen to my body and offering it variety is my new motto. Yes. There you go. Nice Your one, Bruno. body tells you a lot when you listen to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and variety is the spice of training. So there we go. Um, cool, some, some lovely comments as always under the, uh, under the videos over the last week. So we do like hearing from you, that's for sure. Um, also under last week's GCN show, a lot of people commiserating for poor old Dan with his gammy, yeah, flimsy man. little ankle that just sort of kink snapped. I when feel sorry for him. Faced with a stiff breeze. Uh, no, I feel sorry for him as well. Um, anyway, uh, Lillian said, uh, on the bright side, Dan, nobody can now tell you you've had enough beer. Just make puppy eyes and point at your ankle. It's positive to everything. Exactly, absolutely. Um, anyway, there we go. Right then, what is coming up on the channel this week, Connor? So on Wednesday, we've got Breaking in Corners, makes you faster. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone, what? Yeah, Breaking in Corners makes you faster. Okay. Check that one out. I know. What? Interesting. I'm going to have to watch it myself just to see uh, if I can get any little sneaky advantages on Hank. There you go. Uh, right, Thursday, how to stay dry on your bike. Friday, it's one of yours, isn't it? Yep, yeah, we've got training after illness. What do you do when you get sick? Should you keep on riding? When do you start riding again? And how do you manage your symptoms to, you know, not interrupt your training or your riding too much? So. Nice. That sounds like a good one. Um, on Saturday, our friendly bodybuilder who's absolutely flipping enormous, um, has taken on a track sprinter. So we've taken him to a velodrome. Can he put his 2,000 watts to good use? Did the bike survive? That's what I want to know. That's a really flipping yeah. good point. Um, and then lastly, on Sunday, you might remember the video where I attempted to ride up the slab, which was a 37 degree, what's that, 70 odd percent climb. Uh, and anyway, we found a steeper one. We found a one-in-one -one gradient, so 100%. And we're gonna try and ride up it on our uh, Kona e-bike, the El Libre e-bike. Yeah, I was so intrigued by this, I decided to get myself an invite and I'm gonna go and watch. Yeah. So, stay tuned, it's gonna be good. gonna be stood at the bottom with a crash mat, just in case I uh, topple over. Well, I'm gonna be on spare camera. <laughs> <laughs> no crash mat. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and then also, of course, it's not just what's on uh, on GCN. We've got what's on GCN Plus, haven't we? And it's a bonanza <clears throat> at the minute. Yeah, we've got some cracking stuff coming up, including an adventure in Mongolia with myself and Jenny Graham coming out next week. So I'm really excited to share this with you. We took a little ride through the Gobi Desert, no less, uh, meeting the people of the Mongolian steppe and also trying to ride up the largest sand dune system in Asia, which was Whoa. an experience. It was a, it was a hefty, hefty um, challenge. And everyone we met along the way said we wouldn't be able to do it. Every single person said we wouldn't be able to do it. So check out the film and see, uh, see if we did not indeed manage it. There we go. Uh, and uh, don't forget, of course, we've got Track Champions League um, happening every Saturday at the moment. You can watch that on GCN Plus. And also the cyclocross season is amazing at the moment. Uh, Check out Overicer at the weekend if you haven't seen that already. It was proper muddy, technical, fast. Tom Pidcock's back in action as well in the men's category, yeah. Yeah, and we've got uh, Courtrick, I believe, coming up this weekend. Yeah, and we the city do. centre cyclocross course. So that'd be a great one to check out on GCN Plus. Yeah, and Matthew Vanderpool is limbering up currently as well, so he's nearly ready for his return. So, uh, oh! It's Getting great, good. it's great. Right, thank you very much everyone for tuning in for the GCN show for this week. It could be anywhere from 20 minutes, I guess, to about an hour and 45, the amount that we've been gibbering on. But Depends how much of my laughter's cut out. <laughs> <laughs> love everyone's names though, don't want to insult anyone, I love the names. Yeah. Um, I just smelt something in that bottle. What was it, Shellywell? Shellywell. There we go. Shellywell. Right, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks Shellywell.